Hello and welcome back to part 5 of um, Converted to Islam's Paul and Crucifixion. Now, before we heard him say something very interesting. He said because Paul was giving them a sharp rebuke so that they would come back to sound doctrine um, because they were destroying people's homes with their false teachings, that he was somehow threatening him, threatening them. Well, first of all, he was not. He was saying that, that they are going to be accursed if they continue doing it. And don't you as Muslims believe this as well? That if somebody is teaching false things that aren't in line with your what you believe is true, which is actually not, by the way, because your God's the deceiver, um, that they'll go to hell? So what's your problem with this? But here's the scary thing, is that according to Sahih Bukhari, number 2778, narrated Abu Huraya, Allah's Apostle said, I've been sent with the shortest expressions bearing the widest meanings, and I have been made victory, victorious with terror cast in the hearts of the enemy. And while I was sleeping, the keys of the treasure of the world were brought to me and put in my hand. Abu Huraya added, Allah's Apostle has left the world and now you people are bringing out these treasures. Chapter 3, verse 151. Soon shall we cast terror into the hearts of the unbelievers, for they have joined companions with God, for which he had sent no authority with a their abode will be the fire, and evil is the home of the wrongdoers. Quran 8 verse 12, instill terror into the hearts of the disbelievers. Quran 2 verse 191, kill the disbelievers wherever we find them. Quran 8 verse 7, Allah wished to confirm the truth by his words. Wipe the infidels out to the last. Quran 4 verse 89, they, the infidels, desire that you should disbelieve as they have disbelieved so that you might be alike therefore take not from among them friends until they fly in Allah's way but if they turn back then seize them and kill them wherever you find them and take not from among them a friend or a helper so your religion is teaching you to kill them as uh, 929 also teaches and the, pro the example of Muhammad and the examples in the Hadiths and the Tafsirs. So you have a problem with Paul doing that when just giving a warning that they will go to hell if they continue what they're doing. But your religion is teaching to kill them. And we see this everywhere when Islam is the dominance. When in the West you cannot do that because you guys will go to jail and you will live a miserable life if anybody ever tried to do such a thing. Yet when you have the upper hand, you do not go for peace, as the Quran has taught you to do. Paul was in, in fact an enemy of Christianity. He wanted to destroy Christianity. He was actually endorsing the killing and persecution of Christians. Uh, we also see that Paul... Okay, so hold on. You accept that Abraham used to be a pagan before he followed Allah. That he said that the sun and the moon and the stars were all Allah and Akbar. And then he came to the truth. So why then do you have a, a problem with Paul doing that? You see your in inconsistencies and hypocrisies? Paul uh, was lawless and he considered everything lawful for himself in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. And he considered God... 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. If any of you have a dispute with another... Dare he take it before the ungodly for judgment, instead before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if you are the are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more the things of this life? Therefore, if you have disputes about such matters, appoint as judges even men of little account in the church. I say this to shame you. Is it possible that there is nobody among the you wise enough to judge a, a dispute between believers? But in sorry, but instead, one brother goes to law against another, and this in front of unbelievers. The very fact that you have lawsuits among you means you have been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be cheated? 
Instead, you yourselves cheat and do wrong, and you do this to your brothers. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, Muhammad, nor idolaters, Muslims bowing down to the black stone, nor adulterers, Muhammad, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, Muhammad having gay men living in his house and allowing a gay man to lead the prayer at the mosque, nor thieves, Muhammad, doing caravan uh, raids, nor the greedy, Muhammad, um, taking from the uh, caravan trades, nor drunkards, nor slanders, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And this is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. Meaning, we were all like this, but we need to come to the Lord and be washed and made pure by repenting, meaning turning away from those sins. Yet Muhammad continued on in them. He was never a prophet of God. But you're saying this is somehow who Paul was. No. In fact, we see this beautiful teaching. He's saying the godly people should not be going to ungodly rulers and showing that they have disputes. Will that win them over for, for God? Will that win the pagans over for God if you're if the believers of God are fighting each other and they can't make it right? And he's saying, can you get one of your people from your church to go and do that? He's shaming them, rightfully so, for something wrong they were doing. And you're misunderstanding this completely, as you do with the rest of the scriptures. God's law, a curse for us, basically, in, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. So we can see why someone would be suspicious about such a man to convert to Christianity or the Nazarene way, as it was called at that time. Christianity was something, uh, the word Christian was actually an insult that the non-Christians would use for these for these followers of Jesus. It later became uh, the name of their religion, Christianity. Um, so well, in part, you're misunderstanding that. That was because they called everybody um, brothers and sisters. Yet then, uh, uh, because of the brotherhood of Christianity, yet then... Um, some of them were getting married, and they misunderstood that, and they thought that they literally meant brothers and sisters, even though we are brothers and sisters, by becoming children of Abraham, by becoming children of God, by faith, we are adopted into the family of Abraham. And um, so they thought that the, we're marry, that the Christians were marrying their brothers and sisters, which is, uh, as we saw, the sexually immoral will not enter the kingdom of heaven, as we just read. So you're misunderstanding that and why they called that as an insult. Basically, yeah, we see here that this is the case. Also, um, it, And that's all right. Let people insult us. They will always insult us and whatever. They insulted Jesus. He took it. He's strong enough. We have a Lord that took upon people's insults. And while he was, he was thinking of others. Unlike your Muhammad, who all he did was think about himself. Paul did. And it's the same with you Muslims. All The only reason why you do good is to try and get to heaven for yourself. In fact, said that he was not speaking the words of God in his letters, but that he, he said his own words. They were his own words in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12, and verses 25 to 26. Uh, no, let's read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 12. To the rest I say this, not the Lord... If any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean. But as it is, they are holy. But if an unbeliever leaves, let him do so. A believing man or woman is not bound in such circumstances. God is called to live us in peace. How do you know? How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband, or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? Nevertheless, each one should retain the place in life that the Lord assigned to to him and to which God has called him. In other words, what he's saying is that if you then become a believing Christian and your husband or your wife is not a believer, that you are to remain with them. You're not to go and get divorces. You're, and by your example, save your family and your children. This is a beautiful teaching that you're trying to malign. 